Hi everyone, and um, welcome to part four, the final part of this how to draw a cat um, course. This is yeah the final part, and in this part we're going to cover the how to draw black fur, how to draw the whiskers, and how to draw the ears. So if you would like to skip forward to any of those parts, I'll kind of leave little timestamps for you. So the ears start at 41 minutes and 15 seconds and the whiskers start at 57 minutes and 10 seconds. So if you want to skip ahead to those, that's completely fine, you can do. As you can see, most of this video will be focusing on the black fur of the cat. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So, as you can see, I've kind of got a nice base. It's kind of the opposite to the white fur, in that we have to cover quite a lot of space and leave no white paper showing through. So to do this I just used a nice mix of our favourite sepia Timson and steel grey. And then also I used the slate grey as you can see just under the eye just to kind of darken that out a bit. So basically all I'm trying to do here is create a nice little base. I did that with the steel grey and the slate grey that's completely covering the paper. And then I'm just building up the tone with the slate grey. Um, I'm not sure if you can see but I'm using very very light pressure, just taking it in the direction of the fur. But this will all be blended out with water so that doesn't matter too much at this stage. See I'm really not pressing down, I'm just taking it all the way to the edge of the face and then back up. Covering most of the face to be fair with this slate grey, I just wanted to make sure the black was nice and black and this is just how I created the base. So now I'm taking a dark brown as well and just going over that area really nice and rough. So I'm not sure if you can see in the reference photo but she was quite a warm black coat so I think that was mostly because the sun was shining so for a lot of the colours that we use we'll use quite a lot of browns as well because that will really warm the black coat up. And then just taking a damp brush and like we've done with most of the other parts in this course, just blending that out nicely. And you can see how the colours are starting to get activated and just blend together. And here I'm focusing on the edge and all I'm doing is wetting the edge down. And then with my finger I take more water off the brush and the more water I take off the brush, kind of the less the colours blend. So once I've wetted them all down, I take some more water off the brush and then go over the edge just to kind of soften it up a little bit. You can see it's super patchy, but like I've said before, that really doesn't matter because it's going to get completely covered anyway. It's just about creating a nice wet base. We want to cover all of the paper, even if it's patchy, just as long as no of the paper shows through. And she's not looking too pretty at this stage, as you can see it's very patchy, very messy, not very soft and very like all, it's not even very dark. So this is just the first initial layer of this process. And then once that layer has nice and dried, I just go over it again with the slate grey just to darken up the areas we've already worked over. So here I'm trying to build up the tone a little bit more under the eye. And when I say build up tone that means the lights and the darks. So I'm just trying to darken up the area under the eye here. And by doing that I'm kind of creating the illusion of the cat's anatomy. So making those cheekbones where the light is shadowed from them and the eye and stuff like that. Yeah that's all I'm doing when I mean tone. So here again just focusing a little bit on the direction of the cat's fur now. I think this is the first layer of the dry layers, so when I'm working on it dry I wanna keep all I wanna pay attention to the direction of the fur, sorry, because it won't be blended out, so it's good to try and start building up those layers as I go. And then here you can't really see, but as I go from left to right, or right to yeah, left to right, right to left, as I go right to left, I'm just kind of 
softening the pressure as I go towards the edge of the cat. So it's kind of a harsh pressure and then soft towards the end. Kind of like flicking the pencil off the paper. And then taking a little bit of the sepia temp scent and just blending those layers together. And then a little bit of dark flesh I think in this area. And as I've said before, when you kind of add multiple colours to one area, especially with black coats, it can really increase the depth. So you can see here that I'm using quite a variety of different colours and yeah, that will really help create an illusion of depth in this cat's fur. If I used just pure black and just went straight in with that black pencil, it really wouldn't have kind of the same effect as building up all these layers first. And I'm just taking a dark brown here as you can see and building up those areas again. And I think this is the first layer with the black and I'm just kind of trying to darken up the eye and the side of the face. As you can see it's still very very light and we're not even close to how dark we want this area to be. But that's fine, it's quite a slow process, but we're just building it up over time. And another dark brown, just to again, kind of increase the layers and increase the colour so the tone will be much, much darker. And again, just using the brown to make sure the shadow areas of this cat are nice and warm compared to a cool tone if we just used blues or blacks. And then just detailing a little bit on the inner corner of the eye. And again, more details. So as you can see, I'm not taking the black all the way to the white. I'm kind of doing it in little wispy strands of hair. And that's just because it's a lot easier to kind of draw the black hairs in as needed rather than draw the white hairs over the top of the black. So she had kind of a really nice blend where the two met. I didn't want to kind of cover that over and then really struggle to blend them together. So I left that space open so that I could fill them in as I went along. And then just blending it together because I wasn't quite happy with how it was looking. I thought it could use another blend just to soften the colours together. And when I blended these colours together, it meant that I could also add a lot more colour on top. At so a certain point, once you've kind of layered colours together, you might find that the paper doesn't want to take any more layers. So by wetting the, by wetting what you've already got down, by wetting it, um, yeah, you kind of make it so that the paper can then take more colour on top of that. And with these pencils, once you kind of work on an area that's been wetted down, they become super smooth and creamy to work on top of. And again, doing the same thing I did before, just blending it to the edge, and then taking the paint, some <laughs> taking some water off the paintbrush, sorry, and then just going over those areas to, again, kind of just smudging that edge out with the water, but taking a little bit of water off at a time, and you can see that it does soften it up a little bit. And then once that's nice and dry, just going over it again with a grey colour, just to kind of blend those areas together. And here you can kind of see I'm starting to work on the clumps on the side of the face. So again, like I said before, just really kind of lifting the pencil off the paper towards the edge of the strand and creating kind of little wispy clumps. Really light pressure so you can barely even see what I've just done there. But I'm just taking the pencil kind of towards the edge and starting to build up on those clumps of fur. And again, taking another grey, I think this is a slight grey, and just going over all of the areas, just to kind of tone down those greys. Tone down those browns, sorry, a little bit more with the grey. And now here I'm taking the black pencil, and I'm going to start doing a little bit of detail. So you can see I'm working on the outer corner of the eye there, and just shading where the fur meets the eye, and then underneath. So this is kind of like an eyeliner if you've ever like seen makeup or know about makeup. Um, it's kind of like an 
I'm basically doing eyeliner on the cat's eye. So that's just filling in kind of the lash line where the iris meets the fur. And then detailing the inner corner, just taking the pencil up towards the inside of the face, creating those little wispy strands of hair. So I like to do my shadows by putting the black layer down first and then kind of blending the black into the highlights uh, by using other colours. So I'm just putting the black down first and as you can see I'm trying to get those little details now in with this black pencil, doing tiny little strands of fur on the inner corner of the eye. And then just sharpening my pencil with a little bit of sandpaper. I like to keep my pencil nice and sharp for this part because obviously fur is quite nice and fine. So the sharper the point of the pencil, the easier it is to do fur. If you have a nice thick pencil, the fur will come out quite chunky. So yeah, I like to keep it nice and pointy. And then you can see I'm just bringing some of those shadows into the lash line. And that just softens the edge of the eye up a little bit more. And then taking it back out from the lash line. And here you can see how I'm just kind of adding those black wispy hairs onto the white. But I'm doing it kind of sparingly um, so that some of the white still shows through. And that basically draws the white hairs on without actually drawing them on. And then taking that black pencil out from towards the eye towards the end of the face. And here you can kind of see what I mean by leaving that space for the white fur to come through. So I'm not drawing the white hairs in, I'm drawing the area outside of the white hairs. And that'll just blend those two areas really nicely together like it does on the reference photo with this cat's fur. And some of the strokes, as you can see, when I get towards the black part of the fur are a lot longer than the ones closer to the white fur. And that's just because um, the length of her fur changes the closer I get towards her face. So towards the left side of her face, they're really nice and long. And then as I get towards the middle, they're shorter. So I'm just adjusting my pencil strokes as needed. And then just doing the edge of the face. You can see I'm just kind of planning where I want the pencils to go, trying to make sure the edges are nice and soft on both sides. So basically I'll put my pencil down and then as I flick it as it's towards the eye or outside of the eye I'll lift the pencil off and that'll like kind of lift the pressure and then get a nice soft line. And you can see it's just kind of lots of little scribbles in different directions but it is important which direction it's going in because again this will create the illusion of her fur. And I'm just paying attention to my reference photo, constantly looking back at it on my little iPad. And yeah, that's how I make sure this drawing is nice and accurate. Just looking back every five seconds. So there we go. So that's most of the shadows for this left side of the face. Um, the white and the black don't blend in perfectly at the moment, but that's okay, we'll go back to it later. And I'm just blending out these edges again with really nice light pressure, just creating those little wispy hairs. And these you can be a little bit more kind of free with your paint, sh with your brush strokes, sorry. But I do want to, I'm creating kind of clumps and then doing wispy hairs on top of the clumps. So clumping that little bit of fluff together, as you can see there, there's kind of lots of little strands going in one direction, in one area, and then little wispy hairs on top of those. And 
And as you can see, I'm just blending the left side of the cheek as well into the neck ever so slightly. And I'm kind of doing varying lengths as well on the edge of the fur, so as I get closer to the face, they're kind of a lot more clumped together and a lot shorter, and then as I kind of create the wispy hairs, the wispy hairs are a lot longer, but they're also a lot thinner, so very light pressure for the wispy hairs. Um, but yeah, they kind of go a little bit longer and a little bit more varied in position. So they're a little bit more spread out, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's kind of the base for this left side of the cat's face. Um, I'm going to add highlights to blend them together. As you can see, I'm just sharpening my sepia 10% there. And then I'm going to kind of go over the white again, just to blend that white into the black. So there you go, you can see I'm just adding little highlights and again these are very sparing, really really s short strokes just on the top of kind of where the cheekbone is. And then a little bit broader and longer as I get towards the edge of the face. But as you can see they're really kind of sparingly, I'm not doing these across the whole of the face, just certain little sections where I see the highlights. But as you can see, it's kind of just softening the light area into the dark area, just softening that transition a little bit by adding these highlights in. Okay, so now I'm taking some slate grey and I'm just softening that black area into the white area there. You can just see I'm adding kind of a little tiny little wispy hairs and just pulling the black into the white. Again, really light pressure, really soft. Um, but yeah, just kind of little rough brush strokes across. And again, you can see I'm kind of doing these really sparingly. There are not so many that it's kind of filling in all of the white and leaving gaps for the white to show through. And here I'm just using the white pencil and as you can see, I'm kind of going over the white into the black area. So all I'm doing here is just kind of pulling the white pencil from the white into the black. And this kind of creates a little bit more of a soft, layered effect. And then doing the same on the inner corner of the eye. And as you can see again, yep, just a really nice big long stroke, pulling that white into the black of the paper. And you can see some areas where I left that space blank, where the paper shows through, that's really helping kind of make that blend and that transition a lot smoother and a lot softer. Because if I completely took the black and did a nice harsh edge from the white and the black, this wouldn't be quite as soft when we're adding the white over the top. And then a few little wispy highlight hairs just on the edge of the face there. She kind of had a lot of stray little white hairs on her face, so I just wanted to add those in and a tiny little whisker as well. But you can see how just using this white pencil over the black, it's really nice and opaque. And yeah, it's a really nice colour, but yeah, leaving the negative space really does help. And here I'm just using the black hair to thin out those white hairs. Just kind of going over the edges of them ever so slightly with a really light pressure and kind of filling in some gaps. So you can see how that's softened them up a little bit already. Again, you want a really nice light pencil for doing those hairs because if you have a thick pencil, they kind of look a little bit tenderly and not so much smooth little white hairs. And just taking the sepia 10% here on the edge of the face just to kind of blend that line out a little bit. If you're adding a background to your piece, you might want to kind of use a colour that's similar to the background colour. So if you're using a green, maybe try, I'm not sure, like a dark olive or a brown olive or an even umber for the edge of the face. But because it's white, I used a sepia 10%. And again, repeating the process that we did on the cheek now, I'm just going to completely fill in the top side of her face above the eye with the pencil. And there's not too much detail going on on top of her face line art wise, so it's okay if I cover up my lines so I can't see them. If you'd like them there, maybe draw them in in black or another colour that will stand out when you add these layers over the top. 
but do be careful because sometimes when you wet the layers those lines can blend out anyway so just kind of make a note if you can of where those areas are and as you can see I'm kind of going in two different directions just to get a nice covering with the sepia temp scent I'm then going over the top of the slate grey with the steel grey as you can see just kind of really broad and rough doesn't really matter which direction it's going um, but yeah just trying to fill in that page a little bit and then I took a little bit of the violet here and just went along the edge again doesn't really matter which direction it was but this was just to kind of add a little bit of tone and colour I saw a few purple areas on this side of the face so I decided to add a little bit of violet in and then again I went in with the burnt sienna 50% just kind of the, in the inner corner of the eye so again these are just colours that I see in the reference photo um, a lot of this is through kind of colour mixing as well I try and match the colours as close as I can to the reference photo and then blend them with other colours if needed um, but basically how I do that is just pick the colour that I see most predominantly in that one area so right above the eye on the inner corner I saw a little bit of like a pinky brownie colour so I just picked a pinky brownie colour which is the burnt sienna I knew it was going to mix with the black so I tried to add that in knowing that it would mix with the black if that makes sense. I didn't want a perfectly pinky brown spot just in that area. It was a pinky brown mixed with black colour that I saw. So pinky brown and then we do the black on top. And then as you can see just blending all that out again with a damp brush. And you can see the colours start to pop out a little bit but again they will be blended in to look a little bit more black but with a violet burnt sienna hue. I will try and do a more in-depth video if you guys would like on how I pick the colours out for the pieces. Um, yeah, trying to show the process a little bit better and more understandable. And then again just taking a nice dark brown and filling in the edge of the left side of the top half of the face. And this paper is really nice and quite soft so it's perfect for the texture of this cat and this paper is the De La Rowney Langton Hot Press Paper. And here you can see I'm just taking the sepia 50% and just kind of going over the edges of the face here. I think I left kind of the top of the eye clear just because that was where most of the highlights were. As you can see just pulling some of the colour in ever so slightly. And then again I think this is the raw umbra that I'm just taking on the inner corner of the eye there and just pulling it up. Her hair is really nice and long so the strokes can be really nice and broad on this face. And here I'm just using the mono eraser I decided to kind of erase some of the little brown areas so I could leave space for the wispy white hairs. Like I said before it's much easier to leave the white white and then it is to kind of draw over a dark area with a white pencil. And then again just going over it again with the raw umbra just to darken up those areas. So like I said before just building up that tone, focusing on what the high points are and what the low points are, where is the cat the darkest and where is it kind of got a little bit of highlight in her fur. And yeah just creating a really rough shape of her face. 
and you can kind of see already how her eyelid is kind of really nice and highlighted and that just even in this really messy ugly stage it creates a really nice kind of shape for her, the top of her face and then going over it with a nice grey I think this is a slight grey again And I decided to take the slate grey over the areas that we did before just because I felt like they weren't quite as dark as I would like. I did want the top of her head obviously to kind of match the cheek so I decided to take the slate grey over that area. It wasn't going to be enough to completely kind of make it really dark like the sides of the face in the inner corner um, but it would darken it up a little bit that it wasn't so bright. And then here it's like a little bit of brown on the inner corner, like I said before I saw a lot of brown in that area. So I just decided to add a little bit more brown to those sides. And then again a little bit of violet just to pop out this kind of top half of her face here. Again just drawing in the colours that I see on the reference photo. If you see different colours feel free to use those. And then with a damp brush just blending out and I decided to start with the browns um, but I didn't push the brown into the light areas I just blended the brown and then took a little bit of water off for the edges to soften those out and you can see every time I take the brush off camera I'm just taking a little bit of water off just to soften that up a little bit so when I take water off the brush it means that they won't spread the pigment quite as much so I can get a much softer effect and then once there's not that much um, water on there, I dip it in again, take some more water off for a damp brush and then I go over the highlight areas. So as you can see with the damp brush it's spreading the pigment ever so slightly but not enough that it's like taking it too far into other colours or other areas. And just kind of flicking it out into the inner corner where the white is as well. So there you go, it's really messy like the other layers have been, really messy, really patchy. Well, that's okay because the colours are really nice, I'm really happy with the colours and the tone that we've got down and that's all that matters at this stage. And then once it's dry I just go over it with another grey colour just to kind of soften that highlight a little bit and you can see already how it's kind of blended a couple of the colours together. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm just taking the black pencil to create tiny little wispy hairs that kind of stray away from the black part of her face and into the white on the bridge of her nose. So yeah, these are just tiny little strokes, um, yeah, just slowly spreading into the white. And again, really light pressure for these, so I kind of press down and then towards the edge of the hair, just lift it off. So kind of harder and then lighter. I don't want to say hard because it's not a hard pressure, but it goes lighter towards the end of the pencil stroke. And then as you can see that kind of just blends the two areas together really nicely again creating the illusion of fur with just tiny little pencil strokes. And then darkening up the inner corner of the eye. So cats are quite different to a lot of animals in the respect that they kind of have a really dark shadowed inner corner of the eye and then it kind of lightens up over the eye lid um, but yeah the inner corner of the eye is really dark so as you can see here I'm just kind of darkening that up with the black pencil and then towards kind of the top of the head I'm making those pencil strokes really nice and long and softer 
and yeah, stretching those out a little bit more. But it's really kind of dark and yeah, covering the whole inner corner of the eye there with the, just the black pencil. And then I decided to add a little bit of a white highlight, just adding some tiny little white strokes there because again she did have some little wispy hairs on the inner corner of the eye. And it's just those little details that you notice in the reference photo that when you add onto your piece it kind of just pulls the piece together a lot. And here as you can see I'm doing the same thing so taking the pencil and kind of lifting the pressure off towards the eyelash, eyelid sorry, and that kind of creates a really nice round soft shadow. And then just softening those edges up with the CP 10%. I don't think it really matters if you decide to do the black before you do this part, but for some reason I decided today I was going to Add the CP 10% on the that part first, and then taking the black pencil and just doing the edges. Again, like I said before, just really light pressure and towards the end of the pencil stroke, making it lighter, but focusing on kind of little clumps of fur, and then very sparingly doing little wispy hairs as well with even lighter pressure. You really don't need to press down too hard on this stage. I would say kind of the only time that you really kind of need to apply pressure is when you're doing white hairs, especially like whiskers, because you kind of have to lay over a lot of pencil with white, which is quite um, hard to do. So yeah, that's kind of the only time that you really need to And as you can see here, I'm just adding the wispy hairs, really really light pressure, they're not even showing up on camera, that's how light they are. But they do show up in the photograph and it does add to kind of the final look, so yeah, just really nice and light, soft little wispy hairs there. And again, adding kind of clumps of hair with the black pencil. So by doing this, it's just kind of soften, so softening the edge out, um, and yeah, it really creates kind of the illusion of nice, soft, fluffy fur. Uh, because it's not one length and it's not one thickness all the way around, especially towards the edges. It does get a lot thinner and a lot softer. So that's all I'm doing with this pencil here, by adding the clumps and then the little wispy hairs. And then as you can see, I'm kind of taking the pencil um, on the edges. So I'm just kind of doing one pencil stroke one way, so right to left and then left to right. And again, kind of softening it up towards the end of the pencil stroke. And then from the edge, just towards kind of the eye line area again, just left, softening the pressure up towards the eye. As I get closer to the eye, yeah, just softening that pressure and that'll create a really nice soft blend. And again, like I did with the cheek, I'm just focusing here on the dark highlights, so I'm just adding the black pencil for now. And then again, I'm just kind of focusing now, just above where the eye line is. So she had like um, her eyelid and then an area just above, I guess, under the ear, um, where it's kind of highlighted. But there was a little bit of shadow gap in between. So I'm just kind of filling that out now with the black pencil. And then kind of, as you can see, towards the top of her head and the forehead area. And I just leave kind of the top half of her head where it's super nice and fluffy till the last, um, just, yes, yeah, so I can make sure that's nice and soft. For now, I'm just adding the shadows in. So as you can see, there is quite a hard line there now between the top of the head and the forehead, but that's okay because I'll blend it in afterwards. Um, but adding again a little bit more colour, so I'm using the violet here just to kind of soften the edges. Yeah, kind of pop a little bit of purple in there. 
And then again with a little bit of burnt. Nope, sepia 50% though. Just softening that edge up. And as you can see kind of when I add the colours in as well, it does really soften those edges up and make them a lot smoother. So basically all I'm kind of doing is focusing on the transition from the light areas to the dark areas and how they work together. Are they really harsh or are they a lot softer? And if they're softer, I'll add a little bit more colour like the sepia 50% or the violet. And if they're harsher, then I kind of just do kind of wispy hairs and pencil strokes across the page. So here I'm just using the sepia 10% to do highlights similarly to how I did them on the cheek. So again, you can't, I'm not even sure if you could see how that worked there, but just tiny little highlights across the top of the head, towards the ear. Again, really sparingly, so I'm not doing these completely across just certain varied areas where the highlights are on the face. And then pulling them up kind of from the eyelid across that top half of the face. And you can see how I'm pulling them into the shadowy dark areas as well and again that just softens up that blend um, and that transition from light to dark. And then I took a little bit of a black pencil again and just went over some of those areas that I highlighted just to kind of soften them up because I found that it kind of covered up some of the fur texture that I did. As you can see, I'm just adding kind of bigger pencil strokes now with the black pencil to again add a little kind of, yeah, the illusion of fur and the illusion of lines in the fur. So as you can see, I'm just doing kind of where the eyelid, sorry, meets the side of the face. And again, towards the ear area. And these are, yes, just really kind of rough pencil strokes. Again, really varied, so the highlights do show underneath. I'm not completely covering over the top of the highlight. And then here I took a little bit of a steel grey because I found that kind of over the eyelid area there was a little bit more blue tone, so I just added a few little blue highlights. Over But as you can see now, I'm just using the white pencil and it is really, really quite opaque and pigmented over the black. Um, so I'm using a really kind of light pressure here because although it doesn't look it, if I press down too much, it does come out really quite opaque. Um, and I do kind of want more of a grey highlight rather than a bright white one. So I'm just using a light pressure and just kind of creating rough little pencil strokes over the area to kind of create little highlight hairs and then again just softening it up with the violet pencil and as you can see really light pressure when I hold kind of towards the end of the pencil that means it's really light because I can't press down too hard because I'm holding the end and then using a brown again to kind of just blend those areas together and you can see how that brown just pops out there and makes a really nice warm shadowed area And then focus in on areas where the hair kind of breaks and has little gaps in the fur. And then again really light pressure kind of over the top. So when I use really light pressure and kind of go over an area, I'm basically kind of creating a little glaze of colour if you like. And that's just really soft and adding a little bit of colour over an area. And again using the steel grey here just to create those wispy hairs, so really light pressure, kind of pushing all of my pencil up. And then I take the French grey and just kind of go over a couple areas where the steel grey is. So I'm using this a lot less than the steel grey, kind of focusing on clumps and individual hairs. But there's lots of steel grey pencils still visible behind this French grey layer. And then taking the CP 10% just to kind of soften that edge up a little bit. 
Again, add in some more loose wispy hairs there. And then the black pencil kind of to finish it off. As you can see, these are a lot thicker, more pigmented areas of fluff. But again, com not completely covering the areas that we've just done, so those are still visible. But there you go, you can see it's already really nice and soft and wispy little hairs next to her ear. So here I'm doing the ear and like I did with all the other areas, just kind of creating a base. Um, with this cat, I was very lucky in that not a lot of the ear was covering, uh, not a lot of the ear was showing, sorry, so there wasn't much skin to see. So I'm just kind of going over it with CP 10%, a little bit of dark flesh and I think steel grey. Basically because her ear is mostly fluffy, the technique that I use for her ear is quite similar to what I did for the rest of her portrait to be honest. Um, yeah, it's kind of... I guess her ear is kind of like lots of whiskers that's very long individual hairs and going in certain directions. Um, but they are a little bit more individual and less clumped and um, a lot more sparse than the rest of her body if that makes sense. So yeah, they're kind of sparse, wispy long hairs that cover her ear. So you can't see any skin, it is mostly just fluff. So I'm just kind of creating the inner corner of that ear where the fur is a lot more sparse and then towards the end when it's a lot darker it kind of starts to clump together again. So yeah, using a lot of darker colours, similar to what we used for the coat of a fur, so I think I used a sepia 10%, a steel grey, French grey, those kind of colours. So yeah, just using a little bit of slate grey now as well over the top of the ear. So this is just the darkest part, and as you can see I'm kind of creating a little bit of fur, but again most of this will be blended anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, just kind of plotting in where the fur is the darkest and where it's a little bit lighter. They will be blended together, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to create um, create the colours that I thought I wanted and then I would add on top of those as I built up the layers, if that makes sense. Um, and then yeah, blending them together. I really wasn't happy with the inner corner of the ear, I thought it was a little bit lighter, but I am a lot happier with the outer corner of the eye. So I'm just blending these colours together, as you can see I'm trying to create nice little soft edges. Um, and then yeah, once this layer is dried I try and fill in and darken up the inner corner of the eye just a little bit more. As you can see as well, I'm kind of pulling colour from the outer corner of that ear into the inner corner very lightly with, yeah, just kind of soft pushing the colour over so slightly from the outside. Um, and that kind of just blends the edges together a little bit more because the fur is very long as I said before so it will kind of go over into the inner corner of the ear. So just by pushing that pigment ever so slightly I'm kind of already building that layer up. So yeah, as I said before, not too happy with the inner corner of the ear so I wait for that to dry and then once it's dry I go over it again with more pencil. Now it's dry, I just go over it again, this is CB 10%. And then this is a little bit of slight grey I believe. As you can see it's already looking a lot darker. Um, and basically all I'm doing here is kind of creating the lightest colour that I see in the ear. So I'm trying to get the base to be the lightest colour because I found it was a little bit easier to do it that way. But as dark as I am comfortable going if that makes sense. And then kind of blending it out a little bit with the CPU 50%. And here you can kind of see I'm focusing on the fur a little bit more. So I'm creating those breaks where the fur yeah, kind of breaks up and is a little bit darker. Basically just focusing on where the fur kind of creates a shadow, um, shadowy area on the ear. 
and then just blending it out and softening up those areas with my damp brush. So this is a watercolour brush, I don't think I've spoken about it before, it's just a little watercolour brush. I think it's by Dale Rowney, I think it's a size 8, but I'm not too sure what size it is, it's quite big. Um, and it's perfect for blending with. And now I decided to take the black pencil and yes, start adding the details. So these are the darkest hairs that are on the ear. As you can see, I'm kind of taking them and pushing them into the face. So again, paying attention to my reference photo, I'm not just making these up as I go along. I'm trying to make them as accurate to the reference photo as I possibly can. So as you can see, that's kind of one big clump of fluff just coming out of the head and into the ear. And then doing the same as I move up the ear and basically just repeating the process. As you can see again, just focusing on the bottom half of the ear. Making sure I pay attention to the direction of the fur, which way it's going. And I ever so slightly just push those out onto kind of, yeah, out of the ear, if that makes sense. Um, because they do go a little bit longer than the ear goes. So I'm just pushing those out and using a really lot of soft pressure and just creating those little clumps there. So as you can see, there's not much going on behind these dark clumps, but I thought it was important to get these down before I tried to fit any more details in first. Just so I kind of knew where they were going to go. And then just softening that bit where the top of the head meets the ear. And filling any little areas in with the black pencil. So now I'm just taking the French grey and adding some shadows onto the little gap in between the two bits of dark fur that we did. So you can see I'm kind of basically just doing the same thing that I did with the black pencil but now using the French grey. And I'm using really broad strokes, kind of a curved a motion from one side of the ear to the other. And as I get towards the top of the ear, just making those strokes a little bit shorter. Hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better in a second. Kind of paying attention as well to where it's shadowed and where the hair clumps together a little bit more. So yeah, I kind of left the middle a little bit sparse because that's where most of the highlights are. And then I go over it again with this light grey and just kind of pick out any really, really dark shadows with this colour. Again, really wispy hairs, very individual, little brush strokes and curved motion. Paying close attention to my reference photo. But I'm focusing most of the shadows on the outer corners of the ear. So the inner corner, the very centre of the ear, is the lightest part. And towards ends are uh, where the pencil is a little bit darker. So I'm focusing much more heavily on the outer corners of the pencil of the ear, sorry, with the pencils. And then very occasionally just taking a little bit of that pencil across the centre to create kind of yeah, a big dark bit of fur. <laughs> And then taking the black pencil again and just kind of going over and creating more darker areas of fluff. I also, at this stage, um, I added kind of really, really tiny little hairs on the side of the ear. So these are really, really small, almost wiry little hairs along the edge of the ear and they kind of pointed up and ever so slightly out from the ear um, and yeah that kind of created the illusion of her a little bit more and you can see I'm just adding ever so slightly more little wispy hairs that just come out from the side of the ear And then with the black pencil, I'm very sparingly kind of using it to create very individual hairs. These are little breaks in the ear where the shadow is the darkest. Again, very sparingly, not trying to completely cover the whole inner corner of the ear at all. And yeah, as you can see there, I just thickened up the edge of the ear as well. 
and then pulling that pencil in towards the inner corner, towards the inner center, sorry. Um, but yeah, doing it sparingly, trying to focus on certain areas. And then I'm just pushing it as well towards the top of the ear because the top of the ear is a lot more darker. Um, again, this is where the hair is quite thin, so a lot of the top of the ear is very dark. Okay, and as you can see again, I'm just kind of pulling all of that fluff from the left side, from the right side, sorry, to the left side, just taking it from the right into the center of the ear. And then darkening it up with a dark grey pencil. And then again, taking the black and I'm just pushing some of the fluff up towards the top of the ear now and then towards the right side. And as you can see here, I'm just adding a little bit of a dark colour towards the right side of the ear as well. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it, but this is basically where the fur is the most dense and the fur texture is quite thin because it's towards the edge of the ear. Um, and then I just kind of add tiny little wispy hairs, really really tiny, again very sparse. Um, on the edge of the ear. And then towards the very, very tip, I had a lot longer, again very sparse, very thin, soft pressure, wispy hairs. Um, she just has very long little wispy hairs on the end of her ear, the very, very tip, so I decided to add those in. And the closer I got to her actual ear, they were quite, um, there was a lot more, so I kind of added tiny, tiny little strokes of hair. I'm not sure how best to describe it, but yeah, tiny little hairs towards the closer part of her ear. And as I got towards the very tip, they were a lot longer and a lot softer and more sparse. Um, I decided to also use the sepia temp scent for some of those because it was a lot softer colour. And yeah, it kind of created another dimension of wispy hairs, if you like. And then again, kind of towards the like left side of her ear, she had a lot of wispy hairs as well, so I used the CB 10% again for some of those really light wispy hairs. So yeah, that is the ear basically, um, there's not much to it, I did add a little bit of highlights as well, sorry, and as you can see me adding the <laughs> dark flesh 50% as well. But that's all of the shadows for the ear. It does get a little bit more technical and a little bit more complicated if you can see a lot more skin on the ear. But for this cat I was very lucky in that she had very fluffy, well covered ears. So here you can see I'm just starting to focus on the highlights now. So I'm using the CP 10% because um, I found that this was a lot softer than just using the pure white pencil. So I went in with a sepia 10% and kind of doing the opposite to what we did with the black pencil and focusing mostly on the inner inner centre of the ear. And again there are some little wispy hairs towards kind of the top of her head where it meets the ear, so I'm focusing some little wispy hairs and highlights on that area too. But as you can see, doing mostly on the inner centre line. And then just adding a little bit more of a dark kind of shadow just on the base of the ear and the top of the head with this black pencil. Now here I take the Y pencil and this is where I kind of do a lot more bold, um, yeah, bold and bright highlights. Again, trying to pull them from the center of the ear. This is where most of them are. Towards the top they're a lot thinner, so I do a lot thinner little strokes. And then towards the middle, and as I get closer to the bottom, they're a lot longer. So keeping that in mind, uh, kind of a similar technique to how I did the shadows, but focusing mostly on the centre corner. I do try and overlap these hairs as well, because of course they are very overlapping. There's lots of layers going on. So yeah, just kind of drawing lots of little squiggly half circle lines across the center of the ear. So as you can see as well in some areas I'm working from the center to the right and as I get towards the right 
instead of having that area really dark I take the pressure off as I get towards the right side of the ear and this just softens the highlight up a little bit more. And again paying close attention to my reference photo just to make sure I get some really nice wispy hairs in there. And then I found that they were a little bit too thick so just to break up the areas a little bit more I decided to go over them with my black pencil. So as you can see I'm just kind of breaking up some of the highlights with the black pencil mostly towards the edges of the highlights. As you can see as I'm doing that, it just really softens that highlight up a little bit and really creates the illusion of more individual hairs. So yeah, that's basically it for the ear area. And then again, just adding some little touch-ups towards the head. head sorry before I add some really bold white whiskers as you can see I'm just sharpening my pencil on my sandpaper and for this I'm just using the white museum aquarelle pencil because I find it layers really nicely over any colour. So just one kind of really bold stroke from the centre of the head and then releasing the pressure as I get towards the end of the pencil so when I press down and then release. And then I kind of go over the whisker on the center with the pencil just to kind of thicken it up and add a little bit more highlight towards the center. And then again add in lots of little whiskers starting from where the whisker starts and then fading out towards the end. And then I also take the pencil back from where I started so the point where I press down and then push the pencil across and then put the pencil on the exact same point and push the other way. So I'm trying to get a nice faded edge on both sides of the whisker. Again thickening it up with the pencil when needed and trying to soften out those edges. So there you go you can see how nicely it just lays over the black it's just pure white pencil and this is a museum aquarelle. And then doing the same on the cheek. Just adding a couple more little wispy white hairs and whiskers. So I like to keep my pencil nice and thin because I find if it's too thick it kind of looks a little bit more tenderly and not quite as soft and whiskery. Um, so yeah, nice thin pencil. I use the white and I try and just go over it as little as possible because if I go over it too much then it can also thicken out the line. Um, if I ever have to go over it I usually only go over it in the centre um, and yeah that's how I do it. I also try not to add any shadows so I don't take another pencil and like kind of make a whisker shadow because you don't really see whiskers having shadows unless you're really up close and personal and the whiskers are quite thick which in this case they weren't so I tried to yeah, just go over it with the one white pencil and then doing the same on kind of the muzzle area of the cat which unfortunately you can't really see but the process is the same just focusing on the edge of the whisker from the edge of the muzzle and then fading it out and it was a lot easier to do on the white area because the colour wasn't quite as dark but if I ever want the colour to be a lot brighter and a lot more pigmented I just take my pencil and dip it in a pot of water and that will kind of create a much more opaque and pigmented look. So there you go, you can see me just dip the pencil in the pot of water just a tip ever so slightly. And I'm going to try and again make sure this is ever so slightly damp, I don't want it super wet. And then just go over the whisker area and you can see how already that pops that whisker highlight out a lot more. Mm. And yeah that's basically it for the whiskers as well so there's really not that much there. 
I did thin them out ever so slightly with the CV 10% just because I felt they were a little bit thick on the muzzle area. Um, but I'm not trying to add any shadows for the whiskers because they don't really need them. I just wanted them to pop out ever so slightly and soften them a little bit. But yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and I hope you found it really useful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and a comment. I hope to see any of the work that you create from this video. I really appreciate everyone's feedback so far. It's been really helpful. So yeah, please let me know if you like this tutorial and if you create anything from it, please tag me in it on social media. I'd love to see it. Thank you for watching. Bye!